Tyrannosaurs are a highly significant and absolutely iconic group of animals. Their rule as top predators of prehistoric North America has made them infamous the world over, and one species more than any embodies this legendary status, Tyrannosaurus rex. However, tyrannosaurs were not always the kings of the tyrant lizards, and at one point they lived in the shadow of another group of large carnivorous dinosaurs. A newly discovered species has helped shed more light on the story of how these remarkable organisms went from small-bodied, agile, low-level predators to the colossal, bone-crushing T-Rex, and allowed paleontologists to gain a better understanding of the rise of the tyrannosaurs. This new, small species was announced to the world when it was formally described in a paper published in February of this year. The name chosen for the dinosaur, Moros intrepidus, hints at its position as an early relative of the later giant creatures that would one day become the top predators of North America, since the genus name comes from the Greek Moros, the being of impending doom. The species name, Intrepidus, originates from the Latin for intrepid, and refers to the idea that relatives of this animal were likely spread all throughout the North American continent at this time in Earth's history. The actual fossil elements that are known for this dinosaur come from 96 million year old rocks in Utah, and the material itself is part of a right hind limb, which has been designated as the holotype, or the original specimen that the new species is based on. Then there are a couple of teeth from the front of the upper jaw that have been assigned to the species as well. So, although it's not a particularly complete fossil, some pretty significant conclusions can be drawn from the evidence we do have. Firstly, paleontologists can tell exactly what sort of animal Moros is. Through comparisons with other tyrannosaurs, this species has been found to be related to taxa known from Asia, and therefore this supports the suggestion that a biotic interchange between the continents of North America and Asia occurred during the Cretaceous, and was the reason that tyrannosaurs managed to spread across North America and eventually come to dominate it. Before Moros was discovered, there was a major gap in our record of North American tyrannosauroids, lasting over 70 million years from the Jurassic through to the late Cretaceous, about 81 million years ago. No definitive tyrannosaur fossils had been found in North America during this time period, despite a growing collection of Cretaceous species in Asia, and so with the description of Moros comes an extension of the record of this group on the continent by about 15 million years. So Moros is perfectly placed to provide much more information on just how these creatures rose to power. By looking at this animal, paleontologists can now get a better understanding of exactly what the physical changes that occurred in the Tyrannosaur lineage were that enabled their highly successful radiation towards the end of the Cretaceous period, and a more precise timing of this event. And what Moros has revealed about this is that Tyrannosauroids actually stayed pretty small for a large part of their time in the Cretaceous of North America, before relatively quickly, in the span of about 16 million years, becoming the giant killers we know them for today. The anatomy of Moros that can be determined from its remains illustrates just how Tyrannosauroids were probably living before they became the apex predators of the region. It's useful that a hind limb is the part that's been discovered, since a lot can be inferred about lifestyle from these bones. Examination by paleontologists has shown the limb to have been incredibly gracile, and demonstrating many adaptations for a cursorial, or running adapted, lifestyle. These adaptations include features such as the very slender limb bones, a foot that is highly compressed, and a fourth trochanter, the main attachment site for the large muscle involved in limb movement, that is positioned high up on the femur close to the body. Comparisons with ornithomimosaurs actually revealed that the foot of Moros was about as slender as these other very fast cursorial dinosaurs, and the tyrannosauroid's foot also displays the oldest evidence of an arctometatarsalian condition. This is an adaptation associated with the ability to run, and means that the middle metatarsal of the foot is very compressed between the two outer metatarsals, helping to distribute the force of the foot hitting the ground amongst the bones. So, as you can see, Moros was quite clearly a relatively fast, agile yet small creature that was probably very capable of chasing down prey while managing to avoid competition with the larger carnivores of the time. These larger carnivores, which early Cretaceous tyrannosaurs would have had to look out for, would have been the Allosaurians, including organisms such as the fairly recently named Seats. 
The description of Moros states that this Tyrannosauroid and its relatives would have been restricted to low-level predators for much of the Cretaceous period while the Allosaurians ruled, until at least the Turonian stage when they had their chance to evolve larger sizes. But how exactly did the rise of this group occur? Well, the Moros paper describes a potential way that this took place. Since top predators can have a stabilising effect on an ecosystem during periods of environmental shifts, the evidence we currently have suggests that the Allosaurians of Cretaceous North America were able to stop tyrannosaurs ascending the food chain any further than they already had once they invaded the continent from Asia sometime before the Albion stage, and overall managed to keep the Cretaceous ecosystem comparatively steady. Staying as small, fast predators with advanced senses, it was only when several major changes in the geography, climate, and environment occurred that tyrannosaurs got their opportunity. Developments such as the spreading of the Western Interior Seaway and a global temperature maximum seem to have eventually combined and proved too much for the Allosaurians, wiping them out and opening up the top predator niche for the tyrannosaurs to claim. In the end, more fossils and data could someday change the specifics of what we understand about the rise of the tyrannosaurs, but with the discovery and description of Moros Intrepidus, we now have a much clearer vision of their ascent, and more confirmation that this lineage, and probably many others, actually originated in Asia. From life as diminutive, fleet-footed creatures, to their quick and impressive radiation into some of the most recognisable and iconic organisms to have ever existed, the Tyrannosaurs represent yet another major success story in the history of life on Earth. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.